Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal bringing you another Mr. Informal podcast. We are on the podcast 236. Hopefully you had a great Thanksgiving and hopefully you had a great Black Friday. If you shop, that's hopefully you were safe. And if you did not shop, that's great as you save money. Maybe you're saving up for Christmas or whatever celebration you are um, doing with your family. And again, I just want to say uh, hopefully you had a great Thanksgiving and hopefully you were you ate a lot of turkey, ham, or whatever food you and your family served that night. So please do not forget to add me on Instagram, M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L, and then check out my website, MrInformal.com, M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com. Again, this is the podcast 236. And so what do we have for today? Number one, dad's shoes. Yes, Golden Goose and New Balance. For some reason, they're fighting over some some terminologies here. Number two, Abercrombie and Fitch is rising. That's correct. Number three, Elon Musk. I'm sure you know what I'm going to be talking about here, but I do want to talk about it. Last but not least is what are the stats for Black Friday 2023? All I can say is there was a lot more people in this Black Friday compared to a few years ago. And so those are the four topics for this Mr. Informal podcast. Two, three, six. Let's go ahead and start the podcast. On to the first topic from retail.com titled Golden Goose Ask Court to Dismiss New Balance Dad Shoes Infringement Complaint. The streetwear brand claims that the athletic wear giant failed to allege its rights in the complaint over the Dad Star sneaker. So, Golden Goose has filed a motion to dismiss New Balance infringement complaint which alleged that the streetwear brand Dad Star shoe was confusingly similar to New Balance 990's design, according to court documents filed last week. New Balance opposed the motion. Attorneys for uh, Golden Goose argued that New Balance failed to plausibly uh, allege rights in a protectable trade dress and the complaint failed to allege any claim to which relief may be granted wow so can you believe that the dead star shoe that golden goose has produced there's a uh, new balance is saying whoa it's way too similar to the new balance version of it that's what they're saying And I'm looking at it and I'm telling myself, "Mm, not really. I'm not sure how New Balance is going to show that, hey, they copied it. Now, if they want to say they were inspired by uh, the New Balance 99, they call it a dad shoe. I mean, sure, but to say they straight copy it, I don't think so. And but I guess this is where New Balance lawyers is gonna have to show proof that they did copy it and they infringe upon the design of the 990. Not only that, I wanna uh, let everyone know that it was not New Balance who who coined the term dad shoe. It was the public. It was the streets. It was actually the kid, the teenagers. Because they see their dads with the New Balance, and so and so they thought that hey, you're wearing New Balance, dad, and so they're calling it Dad Shoe. So later in the paragraph, they say New Balance is well known as Dad Shoe brand and Foster associated with the term. The original complaint states it further stated that within New Balance small family, the 990 is known consumer as the original Dad Shoe. Uh, no, any New Balance could have been the original Dad Shoe. What are they talking about? Look, I'm not saying that Golden Goose um, was not inspired. I do think they were inspired. But to for New Balance to say that 
the 990 is the original dad shoe i don't think so now it's pretty obvious that new balance is making money off of the term dad shoe even though they did not invent it it was again it was the teenagers or it was the younger generation who coined that even me i knew new balance was a dad shoe and it was just recently that new balance started to you know what make profit off of that name and wait a minute did new balance ever thank the public for that no heck there, there's even there used to be a stigma where new balance when you were you new balance you had a midlife crisis you were a dad and so nobody wanted to wear new balance because it was not cool but now it became cool and so it's pretty obvious that New Balance is trying to take profit of it. And they're being so cocky that they decided, you know what? The Dad Star by Golden Goose looks too similar to the 990 and we're going to start suing Golden Goose. But look, if I was New Balance, I would just let it go. And the fact that you couldn't even thank the public for calling it a dad shoe and make it cool again, that's, that's despicable to me. On to the second topic from RetailDive.com. Abercrombie & Fitch sales jumped 20% in quarter three. Company's namesake brand posted 30% growth, while Hollister was up 11%. Now it's a question of sustaining the momentum. Abercrombie & Fitch & Co. Quarter three earnings exceeded analysts and the company's expectations. The retails. The retail reported net sales of 1.1 billion of quarter profit ended October 28. That's up 20% and 880 million last year. Overall, compared to sales rose 16% from last year, the company's namesake apparel brand posted net sales of about $548 million, up 30% from a year ago. The retail Hollister brand reported $508 million in net sales, up 11% last year. Abercrombie raised its full year outlook the company's now forecast net sales growth of 12 percent to 14 percent up from 10 percent previously an operating margin of around 10 percent up from previous range of eight to nine percent wow during 19 the late 90s to early 2000 abercrombie and fitch was it a lot of preps were in um and, and I want to say that Abercrombie & Fitch used to be a hunting clothing brand for hunters. Outfitters now became for the suburbs, uh, for the preps. But now, you know, they're half and half. They're, they look into the past and try to create modern, but still not forgetting about the preppy look um, while mixing, mixing the hunters, the outfitters, and the prep look. Um, for me... Abercrombie & Fitch has great quality of t-shirts. When their t-shirts are thick, very great quality. Their sweaters with their fleece sweaters are very warm. But I know people complain about the price because the price is up there. Um, I do think it is overpriced. I mean, if I really want to look trendy, I would not go into Abercrombie & Fitch. I would look for more Zara or H&M or even Uniqlo. But for those who love these type of look, Abercrombie & Fitch and Hollister, hey, that's them. But it is, you know what? From previous podcasts, I'm sure you heard me about Abercrombie & Fitch bankruptcy and downfall. But for some reason, they're starting to trend up. And what goes around comes around. The past comes back. And so this looks like it might be another wave of Abercrombie & Fitch rising again. So, um, the company is in a unique position where both brands are now performing well with Abercrombie & Fitch and benefiting from nearly a decade of repositioning and Hollister gained traction following its own missteps over the last two years and likely, likely benefiting from easing inflationary pressures. There you go. Um, it's good to see a company because I um, mean it's good to see an uh, Abercrombie Fitch, a USA brand, um, maintaining themselves and also growing. Because as you know, people do have jobs over there, so I don't like seeing layoffs. So it's good. Um, but remember, this is a very specific market. 
I'm sure people who love Abercrombie and Fitch will still buy them. Even the people who, people who back then were teenagers, maybe they'll buy Abercrombie and Fitch because they're starting to become on more on that contemporary look. But hey, it's sun, it's something is up. And don't be surprised if, Aber, if Gen Z or these younger generations start promoting Abercrombie and Fitch on the social media and suddenly blows up. I would not be surprised if that happens. On to the third topic, Elon Musk. Elon Musk is in the news lately. I mean, I'm not going to bring up any articles because it's all over the place. He basically told, well, let me preface this, okay? So uh, he's been on the news because he's been supporting these anti-Semitic tweets in his uh in his in the in x or twitter um for me i don't really find him uh anti-jewish or anti-semitic or even his brand there's always people out there talking crap online and they're saying why are you allowing this well i'm sorry why is anti-semitic getting its own um voice here what about just in general anti-hate or racism alone why does it have to be anti-Semitic? That's where my problem lies. And so, a lot of brands, um, such as, oh, well, a lot of brands, and the biggest brand of them all is Disney, is moving away from spending or investing advertisement money on X. And he was asked, I'm paraphrasing here, a lot of brand, uh, a lot of these companies are pulling out of X because of your support of anti-Semitic tweets. Um, what will you do about it? He basically said, "Some if someone's trying to blackmail me with money, which means that hey, if you don't spend uh, advertisement money here, Twitter is going to go down. Twitter is going to go bankrupt." So he said, that "If someone's going to try to bl- uh, blackmail me with money." go fuck yourself that's what he said he said go fuck yourself he and then he said um and said that he he, people thought that he was talking about bob Iger, ceo of disney because he said hey bob if you're in the crowd after he said go fuck yourself well what people don't understand is that he's just not talking about disney alone He's just talking about peop, uh, these brands in general who think that they're doing the moral right. They're being righteous. Thinking that if we, you, if I'm not going to spend investment, uh, advertisement money, so you have to do what I tell you to do. And Elon is basically saying, no, you're not doing that. And people forget that this guy is a billionaire. Well, his net worth is a billionaire. He doesn't have a billion dollars in his bank account. And so for me, I have no problems with that. I probably do the same. I probably do the same thing. I mean, would I say the same thing? I mean, maybe, maybe not. But it's certainly one of these billionaires versus billionaire. It's just one of those cases where rich versus the rich. And I mean, isn't it pretty obvious that who gets the blunt here? Well, it's definitely the poor and it's definitely not the rich and so I have no problem with that and if these brands want to stop advertisement with X because of anti-semitic tweets how about you go you do your research you think that um, anti-semitism, anti-semitism is the only thing that's happening what about China having their own human rights problem what about Israel having their own human rights problem I mean even the USA have their human rights problem so it's not just about anti-Semitic here, anti-Semitics here. I mean, if you really want to do good, then be consistent. But look, uh, to me, I don't have a problem with Elon Musk saying those things. On to the last topic from RetailDive.com. Titled Thanksgiving Holiday Weekend Sees Record Number of Shoppers. I, I could agree with that. Over 200 million consumers shop on Thanksgiving Day through Cyber Monday, surpassing expectation by more than $18 million. Oh, I'm sorry, just by more than $18 million. 
Surpass surpassing expectations, a record number of 200 million shoppers made purchase between Thanksgiving and Cyber Monday. According to National Retail Federation and Prosper Insights Analytics, that figure exceeds last year's total of 196 million. During the weekend, the number of online shoppers rose from 130 million last year to 134 million last year. Million this year, sorry. However, in store shoppers saw a slight decline from 122 million in 2022 to 121 million this year, according to the analysis. On average, shoppers spent $321.41 on holiday related items during the Thanksgiving weekend. Clothing accessories were the top gift category at 49%, followed by toys 31%. Gift cards 25%, books and other media 30, 23%, and personal care or beauty products 23%. Look, I could agree with this, but what I would not agree is the in-store shopping. Now, I went in-store shopping. Don't get me wrong, I went online shopping too. But I felt that there were more people in-store than online shopping look online shopping is easy to me but to say but this that's saying that oh they were down i don't well from where i live i did not think so and so this year black friday to me is basically before the pandemic is basically reminded me of 2015 2016, 2017, and so on before the, this whole pandemic. And even before last year. This time, it was a lot of people. And is that a good thing? Yes, economy-wise, it is a good thing. But it also lets me know that people have money. Um, people want to go out. People want to spend. Or people just want to buy the gifts right away before Christmas comes. Because Christmas shopping is... It gets crazy and not only that there was also cyber monday and i do think that this stats should only compare black friday and black friday online and in store and i would like to know the stats because now if you have a cyber monday of course people are gonna say oh i was just staying at home it was online shopping and so the good news is that people are willing to spend more also just People, uh, people have jobs. Um, I guess people have money, and people are more out and about, um, spending time with family. Certainly, I know many people are off from Thursday to Sunday, and so they have Friday off, and which is great. Spend more time with family, enjoying the turkey, and so on. I also know that a lot of people uh, finish their turkey by 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. and you know what decided to go shopping I'm sure there are outlets there are malls there are stores out there that became open from 10 p.m. Thursday night Thanksgiving night and there's even that were open 1 a.m. on Black Friday that is ridiculous and again People have money, people do whatever they want, but this stat certainly is true from where I'm at, is that more people decided to shop and more people to decide to spend money. And I think it suddenly became more of a tradition. I know people are complaining about consumerism, people are just spending, but look, it is what it is. I'm not saying that people should stop, I do think that if you do have family and you want to buy gifts for Christmas, hey, go for it. Um, if you want to buy it for yourself because you think this is the biggest sale of the year, why not? The thing is, this used, the Black Friday used to be the biggest sale of the year. But it's looking like many retailers are spreading it out throughout the, throughout the year. But certainly since christmas is coming this whole gift giving and buying thing is not yet over and so that concludes this mr informal podcast 236 hopefully you enjoy 
this podcast from beginning to end and if you did i do appreciate it and if you did listen to me from beginning to end again i do appreciate it hopefully i gave you some new news that you have not heard before um gave you some stats that is quite insightful and certainly please do not forget to add me on instagram m-i-s-t-e-r-i-n-f-o-r-m-a-l Check out my website, mrinformal.com, M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com. And so this is Mr. Informal bringing you the podcast 236. I will see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye.